Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, workstation graphics cards. They're not designed for gaming, but sometimes you can find a great deal on them on used auction sites like eBay. But is it ever worth buying one? Well, we've tested a couple of NVIDIA Quadro cards in the past and found that they can actually somewhat run games, though because the drivers are designed specifically for workstation applications like CAD software and precision rendering, they won't do as well as their gaming counterparts when it comes to running the latest and greatest titles. Today I wanted to take a look at the subject once again because I found a card on eBay that I've honestly never heard of. It's an AMD Radeon Pro WX 2100 GPU and I paid just £50 for it. Despite the price, I can tell that it's never really been used and I'm told by the seller they bought it in error thinking it was a gaming card, though it was never properly tested. So today I want to establish what the gaming GPU equivalent of this card is and whether or not this workstation GPU can play games, despite the fact that it was clearly never designed to do so. Now to be clear, I would never recommend buying a workstation card in place of a gaming graphics card if your sole intention is of course to play games, but I thought why don't we see what this card is capable of anyway, put it to the test in a few modern titles and see how bad or good it might be. After all, judging from the specs and after researching this card a little bit, it seems that it's quite a recent release, so it should in theory be able to run all of the latest games out there. Without further ado, let's get into it and put this mystery card through its paces. So the Radeon WX2100 retails new for around £100 or $130, which sounds cheap for a workstation graphics card. Remember though that we are looking at this from a gaming perspective and in that respect, from what I can tell the desktop gaming focused equivalent of this card would be a Radeon RX 550, which shares the same core count, Lexa graphics processor and memory amount. Because workstation GPUs are specifically tailored driver wise to the design and engineering sector, it wouldn't make much sense opting for one of these at its full retail price over an RX 550, though it's worth remembering that professional graphics cards are built with premium components, are tested vigorously and come with better support from the companies selling them, whether that be AMD or Nvidia. So out of pure curiosity and in answer to some of the questions I get on the subject, let's see how well this thing can game. Game. Firstly I had to install the drivers. This process is definitely worth mentioning because it puts my previous not designed for gaming statement into question a little bit. So when you install the stock software, you'll get the option to use multiple drivers. If you select yes, the installation will continue as normal with AMD's blue professional theme. Once that's all done, you'll then see a driver options button in the AMD menu. Clicking this allows you to switch to gaming mode and installs standard red theme Radeon drivers as I like to call them. Don't get too excited because from what I can tell this feature doesn't improve gaming performance as I'll demonstrate later on, but it adds the features you would expect from new gaming cards like Radeon Relive Capture, Radeon Chill and the ability to enable and tweak the in-game overlay. For the first few titles I've included comparative results from gaming on both the workstation and gaming drivers to show you that they make no real difference performance wise. In fact, switching to gaming drivers actually knocked a few frames off the results. The test system today of course comprises of my Ryzen 5 1600 build along with 8GB of 2400MHz DDR4 memory. So as I mentioned before for the first few games you will see the results from both the graphics card with the workstation drivers and gaming drivers installed on screen. Starting with Overwatch and the footage you see throughout will be the footage from the workstation drivers considering that they performed a little better and the gaming drivers actually impacted the frame rate just a little bit. It could just be a coincidence but from what I found the workstation drivers definitely did mean our games performed slightly better overall. With Overwatch the game averaged over 70 frames per second with the medium preset. The resolution scaling here was at 100% and anti-aliasing was turned off which proved to give us a good few frames extra. Overwatch here was more than playable and I tested the game across a few different maps though the comparative results between the two drivers were tested on the same map on an online match. As you can see here the footage was from an AI practice but I always take the real figures from an online game. I simply show footage from a bot match so to speak because 
I get wiped out far less often and the footage just flows a lot better to be honest. <laughs> Now in Dirt 4, the game was set to the medium preset again with none of the extra settings tweaked or touched at all. Here I played through a rally stage on one of the solo levels, though I did also test a couple of multi-competitor events as well and combined the frame rate average 1% low and 0.1% low here to give you a more accurate result of what you can expect across the few different in-game races and options. Here Dirt 4 performed relatively well, exceeding 40 frames per second but never really getting above 50 across most of the races. So I'd have to say that Dirt was a pretty decent experience, though of course you could lower the in-game settings to low or even ultra low for at least 60 FPS at 1080p. And if you're someone who insists on 60 frames per second, then that would be ideal. Although I can't see you opting for a card like this if 60 frames per second is your main consideration. Now at this point I decided to drop the comparison to the gaming drivers because as I mentioned before, the frame rate did dip a little with those gaming drivers installed and they're not intended to improve the performance at all rather than add a few features. So at this point I dropped the comparisons and just focused solely on the workstation drivers. In Far Cry 5 at 900p I had to reduce the settings all the way down to low in order to exceed 30 frames per second almost constantly so there won't be any major dips to the mid or high 20s which made for a pretty decent overall experience if you're happy of course with 30 frames per second. Fortnite on the other hand well that ran at 60 frames per second at least with the low settings. Turning things up to medium gave us about 45 to 55 frames per second on average but I thought why don't we go for a fully fledged smooth 60 frames per second here so I turned everything down to low or near, kept the resolution at full HD and it was a pretty decent overall experience, I have to say. Of course, the game won't look as good as it will on those higher settings, but it's quite a competitive title, as you know, anyway. So I thought, the more frames here, the better. Now, as of recent times, I can't resist the urge to benchmark Kingdom Come Deliverance. It's one of my favourite games to release within the last year or so, and I really have had a great time playing it. I've had to restart the game twice due to save game corruptions for whatever reason, but nonetheless, it's an excellent game to play, and it will put your hardware to the test considering it is quite demanding, though it has seen a few performance patches over the last few months which have increased performance quite significantly in some cases. Here it was able to exceed 30 frames per second, although once again I had to reduce the resolution to 900p in order to sustain a smooth frame rate. But can it run Crisis, I hear you ask? Well, at the highest settings, I may have overestimated the power of this card, as I was only able to achieve around the mid-30s in terms of frame rate here at 1080p. Turning things down to medium or low will drastically impact the visuals of this game, so I decided, hey, why not just try and stick to a solid 30 FPS or above, which I was able to do so with everything on high. You could probably tweak a few in-game settings individually to sustain a higher frame rate if you wanted to, but here at high settings, Crisis ran with about 33 to 37 frames per second most of the time, though this will drop the more enemies there are on screen and will increase the uh, emptier the area. GTA 5 actually hovered around the mid 50s in terms of frame rate with a mixture of settings, somewhat on high, a couple were on very high and a couple were on normal. Anti-aliasing was also limited to FXAA and any forms of MSAA were turned off but we were able to run the game at full HD 1080p which was a nice bonus but it's no surprise considering the age of this game now. It still sometimes feels like it only just came out but I guess that's because of all the online updates that have been coming out ever since this came to PC. Still, it will make for a great experience on this graphics card, and I have to say, the Radeon Pro stayed almost silent throughout my gameplay today. Here's a little preview of the fan noise. Nothing. You can't hear it at all. Finally, we have Bioshock Infinite, which at the medium preset and 1080p once again, ran at 50 to 60 frames per second most of the time. I chose this level here because it seems to be quite impactful on the frame rate, or so I've found, and can be quite demanding on a lot of graphics cards. As you can see here, and as was the case with a few other titles, it will run at 100% most of the time when paired with a processor like the Ryzen 5, as it will be holding the CPU back. 
So there we have it, I hope this video has given you some idea of how an entry level Radeon Pro workstation graphics card handles games should you for whatever reason be thinking of buying one. As always I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like on it down below, if you didn't leave a dislike on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, thank you as always for your continued support on this channel and hopefully I will see all of you in the next video.